Welcome back to lesson 14 of our hot deserts topic and today we are going to continue looking at our case study of the Sahara and we're actually going to be looking at the area that surrounds the Sahara today and we're going to be concentrating on the challenges of living in this area. The first activity I'd like you to do is a bit of a recap of what we did last lesson and that is to have a look at what the challenges of living in a hot desert environment are. So I have linked you to a really excellent case study website, which you can see on the screen there. And that has got lots of information about the challenges of living in the Sahara. Now, I know we kind of touched on these a little bit in our lesson last lesson, but I would like you to make sure that you've got some nice notes in your folders about these. So I want you to make a quick mind map. Shouldn't take you any more than about 10 minutes, if that, with information on the three main challenges. So that is the extreme temperatures, the water supply and the accessibility. As I said at the start of the lesson, we are going to be concentrating on the area around the Sahara today. So we're not looking at the desert itself. We are looking at the fringes of it and the area around the Sahara Desert, which is called the Sahel. One of the biggest problems of living in this uh, edge of the desert area is that it is gradually being turned into desert in something called desertification. This is where areas that used to be um, a different ecosystem that used to have soil and you used to be able to grow things in and weren't quite dry enough and hot enough to be a desert are now becoming deserts. And if you look at the picture that's in the background on the screen at the moment, you can see that the, the soil or what was soil has now become basically completely compacted, unusable. There's no way you could dig that up and grow anything on it. So it is now basically useless for anything apart from maybe uh, walking over. But even that would be really difficult. Desertification happens because of a few different things, but the main reason desertification happens is because any vegetation any plants that were there so you tend to get lots of things like grasses and it's a bit like a sort of savanna um mediterranean type area any of that uh tree and grass coverage that was there is taken away is removed either through animals grazing there cutting down the trees to use for firewood or for cutting down and removing the natural vegetation that was there to use it for farming. When you haven't got any trees, as you know from science, you have nothing there to hold the soil together. Because remember that the roots of trees and plants act as kind of anchors to hold the roots of the, to hold the soil together. And also you've got no plants or animals there to keep the moisture in the soil. So basically the soil can get washed away when they have the infrequent heavy rainfall and it can also be blown away by the frequent really strong winds. So any soil that was there that was be able to be used for farming and for growing is basically removed by either the wind or by heavy rain. So with desertification, what you need to know about it is how it's caused and what we can do about it. So that's what we're going to be looking at across the next couple of lessons. On the screen here, you can see a map which shows areas which are at risk of desertification. So the orange areas are the areas which are already deserts. And our example of a desert, the uh, Sahara, is shown on there. But the bits we're interested in are the yellow sections. These are the sections which aren't currently desert. They are around areas of desert, but are at risk of becoming a desert. So these are the areas where the soil is getting washed away, blown away, and is drying up and basically turning into completely unusable concrete. I'm going to give you an activity to do with this in a second. So make sure that you're really clear that the Sahara is our example of an area that is already a desert. The Sahel is the region just below it, just to the south of it, which is at risk of becoming a desert. The activity that goes with this map then is to please take a good look at that map. And if you need to go back to the 
the previous slide which has got a slightly larger version then do I would like you to select the statements that you think are true about this um, about this map about the areas at risk of desertification and write down the correct ones so pause this video write down the two or three potentially phrases that you think are correct and then I will tell you which ones you should have written down okay so the phrases that you should have written down then a most of the areas at risk from desertification are on the borders of existing deserts and from this map we can see that uh, C is not correct so not all of Africa will be affected by desertification because you can see that there are some areas along the equator and right down at the bottom there around kind of South Africa area that are not at risk of desertification and remember that these are areas if they're on the equator they are likely to be tropical rainforest ecosystems so they are not at risk of turning into a desert because they get far too much rain and they've got a completely different climate and far too much vegetation for this to happen but you can see that a lot of Africa is at risk and in fact because it affects such large parts of Africa large parts of South America and large parts of Australia B is also correct so an estimated 1 billion people live in these areas that are at risk so it's a huge problem you should have written A and B down if you haven't already pause the video and make sure that you do and then we'll carry on So as I said, desertification is the name that we give to when soil is basically completely dried up, destroyed and turned into unusable land. And there's something that causes this, which is the main cause of desertification. And this is irrigation. So last lesson, we talked about one of the issues being uh, the, the lack of water supply or a kind of inconsistent water supply. In areas where farmers can get hold of water and do use water from lakes or from drainage channels to water their crops, this can sometimes actually do more harm than good. So if you water crops in the desert area when it's the really strong sunshine, so pretty much any time during daylight, what happens is that uh, the moisture that goes into the soil is drawn up through the layers of the soil because remember as water heats up and as uh, moisture heats up it kind of rises upwards and this sucks out from the layers underneath the soil the salt that is in uh, just kind of naturally in the lower layers of rocks and things underneath the soil as that salt is drawn upwards and goes through the soil, salt is really harmful for plants. Uh, so if your plants end up being in contact with salty water that's being drawn up and evaporated upwards from underground, that will uh, destroy your plants, but it will also make your soil really salty and it will make your soil unusable not just for that year or a couple of years into the future it can take 10 15 or 20 years for soil if it's completely left alone and looked after to recover itself so this is called salinization and saline is, uh, is the term that we give to uh, salty water so you need to make a note of this on your paper please salinization what is it that diagram might be really helpful for you to remember how it happens, but I would certainly write down the explanation that's on the right hand side, please. OK, last thing that you need to do today, then, is a an explanation of what causes desertification. So we've just talked about salinization. That is one cause of desertification of soil being turned basically into unusable concrete sand but there are a few different causes which can mean that an area is basically no longer usable for farming and will become a desert so if you can go to page 74 and 75 in the online textbook if you don't know how to access that please email me but I would hope that you do by now because we've been using it quite a lot you need to come up with a, a four-step flowchart 
or kind of a step by step explanation of two of the different causes of desertification. The information that you need to create your two sequences, your step by step explanations, is in the the box which is on the top right hand corner of page 75, you can see it in the book there. So choose two of these and then turn them into step by step explanations of how this particular thing, whether it might be population growth or soil erosion or climate change, how does that particular thing end up in the area of the Sahel becoming a desert, becoming dry, unusable, completely uh, solid concrete sand that you can't use for growing. You don't need to send me your work today but I will be asking you to show it to me in our live lesson which is on Friday at 10am so that will be period two and I will see you then.